What's good, people? It's your man, CJ Fresh, battling the forces of wackness since 1982. You are now listening to the Solid Podcast, hosted by my main man, Doc Rock. Doc Rock. Doc Rock. This is the dumbest thing to take this long to put a podcast together. That will end, and it'll end soon. Believe me. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Solid Podcast, episode seven. It's kind of funny. I just released episode six like an hour ago, <laughs> and they were recording episode seven. Um, that's Spencer. What's your name? Spencer Toyama. Nice. Is that anything like the car company? Yeah, yeah. It's pretty much the same thing, except for Anthuriums. <laughs> Anthuriums? What's Anthurium. the Anthurium? Oh, no. My grandfather grew Anthuriums on the big island. Uh, oh. So he has a flower named after him. Cause he, you know, he was like a, uh, he would crossbreed flowers that like, like a lot of the farmers out there. I'm a crossbreed. Yeah. <laughs> Not that kind. <laughs> Not that kind. All right, cool. So, um, you know, it's been a minute since we had a guest and Spencer and I used to work together back in the day. And I was like, man, of all the people, the crazy conversations we used to have at, at the GH at night or our random like alcoholing ventures. I was like, yo, that's a dude I got to get on the show. Well. Yeah, we like. I feel like we don't catch up enough. No. And uh, who's the last guest you had? Lanai. Is Lanai? Yeah. And then before that was Titus. Yeah, the Titus and Doc show was an experiment where we just acted like hella retarded <laughs> for a, a couple of minutes. And yeah, that's that's one of the buzzwords people hate. But sorry, deal with it. Uh, you know what I mean? Okay. Wow. It's okay. I'm not as popular as they are. <laughs> You're a lie. All right, so first, let me uh, do some house maintenance, move these keys before I accidentally bang into stuff during the middle of the show. I feel like I should have wear my hat because my bald spot is showing, but that's okay. We're going in there. We love you for that bald spot, though. <laughs> it's charming. It makes you uh, approachable. I, I got to um, do my best not to laugh really loud in the mic because I'm super good at that. And that kind of causes trouble. So let me uh, fix that just a touch. All right. So first of all, tell everybody who you are and what you do. Um, so my name is Spencer Toyama and I run a small like uh, software development shop out here in Hawaii. Uh, we build web apps and mobile apps and um, like to experiment with new technology. So fun stuff like really want to do some machine learning stuff would be cool. Oh, machine learning. Wow, that's cool. Are you guys, do you have a, a regular expression guy in your spot? No, <laughs> not yet, uh, not yet. Right. That's, that's cool stuff, but uh, I don't, let's not get nerdy because we can get hella nerdy and then people that, on the other side of the podcast will be like, what the heck were those two talking about? So uh, you talk about apps and stuff. Like, what do you mean by apps? What kind of apps are you guys making? Um, so we, we built some software for like Blue Planet Energy. That, that's one that we're uh, proud of. or It's a fun one. Uh, it, it basically manages batteries for like... Uh, consumer batteries for off-grid homes. I think that's the market that they're going after. So it's not, um, they're not really focusing on people that are grid connected. They're, they want to focus on like people who want to get off the grid, like probably tiny house people and like earth ships. Like. That show is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so in love with that show, but I guess the reason why I watch it is I'm looking for it for ideas because like it or not, we have no choice but to be tiny homes here. Yeah. Right. For the most part, most condos, like the new condo that's being built in the back, I think they top out at like 478 square feet. That's like Japan level small. Right. Oh, geez. Like this room right now we're recording is about 260. So it's like a dorm room. basically. Yeah. It's like. So, yeah. Imagine this room plus the rest is the rest of your house. So um, I think that that tiny homes thing is kind of cool. But I, I would love to be off the grid. What I've been thinking about a lot lately is battery solutions and solar solutions for condo dwellers. Something I could stick on a lanai or AKA balcony for people in the mainland. Yeah. That's roughly the size of say four to six of those, you know, rubber made 40 gallon little, you know, great things that everybody takes to the field with all the sporting equipment in and a place to put panels to pick up. And for me, for panels, I would want to invent something that could fit in the, um, you know, on the lanai, you have the railing and whatnot. Ours is covered in glass. Mm -hmm. So 
I wouldn't put something that gets hiding there, absorb all of the sun because the building gets beat by sun. I'm across the street from the ocean and then like store that in the battery. So when we have one of our random tsunami incidences or hurricane incidents, I would be able to have a couple of days worth of power outside of the night. So like to me, that that's the next thing that has to happen for the condo guys. House people, you're lucky. And the house people that don't have solar, I'm like, man, I, I wish I could. If I was you, I would be all about it. Well, I think. I mean, I think we're heading that way towards like a more distributed energy system. It's just like, uh, it's, I think it's uh, business, like centralized businesses that are going to take the longest to, to adopt to the whole thing. Because like eventually HECO, um, who's our utility company here in Hawaii, uh, they should be more of a marketplace than a provider, right? Uh. Like, uh, like what if, what if HECO's job was, was to maintain grid stability and, um, and ensure uh, fair prices for for the people that are that are part of their marketplace. Then, like the solar producers are are producing energy, and then they can also give incentives for storage of energy. Right. Because, uh, um, like, if they gave, let's say, they gave a, a rebate for for like eighty percent of of the cost of a battery, and um, but you as a homeowner get to make money off of the usage of that battery, which which they're like. I don't know what kind of model it is. Maybe they're leasing it out to you, and then it'll it'll like make money based off of uh, how much energy it's it's transferring between units, or they're gonna, or it could just be like you buy one and you get like a better rate to to like trade energy with your neighbors. But then like all of the condos can be giant batteries. Right. The whole west side can just be like a big solar cell, and they can provide incentives to like to create new solar cells because they're gonna make money off of the marketplace by the trading of energy. So so like what happens in Hawaii, uh, all of all of the west side we have like what two hundred thousand vehicles like coming over from the west side and I'm doing the great voyage like across across the freeway <laughs> like amping yourself up like you're going into battle every day and and then um, you use up all the energy in Honolulu like in downtown and uh, the office areas that are just like consuming huge amounts of like electricity right, right. but like that centralization of like consumption like that doesn't lend itself to solar power really really well right because right, right, you're right. running like huge ac units and stuff that are like cooling like cooling down buildings that should be 90 degrees but we're like getting them down to 60 that takes that takes some thermodynamics well you know one of the things that i always thought of and people who I listen even, to the podcast who work in office buildings almost every single person i know that works in a quote-unquote standard office building goes to work and puts on the arctic jacket yeah and they're sitting there all day the whole office wearing jackets and I'm like, maybe you guys should peel the AC back just a touch, you know? And they're like, oh, we can't. There's always some crazy reason, like, why they can't. Yeah. And I'm like, if everyone in your office is wearing a jacket, then facilities is using too much electricity. And in a place like Hawaii, like, maybe we should be a little bit more conservative about the electricity. You yeah. know what I mean? We're, we're going to live on a little teeny rock. So I think a lot of times companies are scared to retrofit certain things. Everyone assumes that, you know, retrofitting is going to cost a lot. But my thing, my thing over and over again is what is it going to cost you not to do it? So we're probably wasting millions of kilowatt hours per year in just a section of downtown with all these buildings that don't allow people to control their own temperature in their individual spaces. Well, no, totally, no, totally. But I mean, I, I think there's like, uh, there's always like the carrot and stick method of like changing behavior. So I don't know what the, um, like I would imagine like as a, as a carrot, you want to give people incentives to, to monitor their own electricity or like their own consumption. But that, those are all like super individual choices too, right? Right, right, like, right. Like we can, we can evangelize and say like, you got to use less energy, but that's not going to stop anyone from using it necessarily. Oh, that hasn't worked for, that conversation has been going on since I was a kid when we had black and white TV. Yeah. <laughs> so and that, I'm I don't, not that old. I don't think it's going to change. I, I think there are a lot of things that people presume have big effects. Surprising have little effects but I think they sound good on paper or they sound good almost from a PR standpoint so companies continue to like speak this method okay here's a uh, not funny but a peculiar story Baltimore is working on a plan 
that basically says they're going to give people a mandatory one year sentence before on top of any other sentencing for anybody that gets caught with a firearm within a thousand feet of a school or a church. Wow. Okay. And I'm like, in on paper, that sounds good. But reality does not sound good because what will happen is the places that are heavily filled with churches are the poor neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, the places that are heavily filled with the schools and stuff are the poor neighborhoods. When they go to build uh, your bigger, your private schools and whatever's like that, they tend to be in more affluent neighborhoods. So in the poor neighborhoods is where you find a lot of your public schools. And then also around there will be a lot of churches. So you're basically blanketing the poor side of town with anybody get caught with a firearm, you get a mandatory sentence. So really what's probably going to happen is the transactions that require you to bring a firearm for security purposes. I'm not going to act like I know anything about these. Hmm. Um, will bring them closer to the neighborhood of the people who don't really want the crime in their area. You're actually going to push the criminals closer to the burbs mm-hmm. so that they can, they, trust me, they're not going to stop making money because the war on drugs, as we all know, is like one of the stupidest things that's ever happened in our country and hasn't stopped the damn thing. So all you're going to do is move that closer to then. So that's an example of, Again, one of these things that sound good on paper, easily politicized, make people feel all real, but it doesn't actually have any effect on the core problem. With everyone, that you know, all the companies and everyone saying, oh, save electricity, save electricity, and yet people just don't do it. Um, that's a little crazy, you know? Yeah. I, well, I think I think just the incentives aren't like clear or big enough for people to act on them, like because uh, one we don't really we don't have like a clear incentive incentive to reduce carbon emissions, right? Like not an individual level. It's kind of like something that that uh, that we like to wear as a badge. Like oh, I recycle. I'm so much better than you. Or I, I bicycle. I'm so much better than you. And I'm I'm totally one of those guys. <laughs> like, hey, I bicycle, bro. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm I'm literally the fat circus bear dude riding down the street on my bike, okay. and I feel I look at people when I'm riding on my bike and a, and a Hummer or a dually roll past me. I definitely look at them like you're a dick. Well, yeah, I mean, you I, don't have no <laughs> tools in the back. You don't have no boat in the back. You have nothing. In, you by yourself in a dually with no equipment. You're an asshole. Well, like. Uh, <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is that being a progressive elitist doesn't really like change people's minds. No, it's but just it, feel, like, it feels good to us. <laughs> it's just, it, and see, it's funny because I make fun of people who do that, but I guess I do it too all the time. Yeah. Like, when you before we came on the air, Spencer asked me like, you know, he's listened to the episodes and stuff like that. But what is the show about? And I'm still finding that, so to speak. But really, I guess if I had to give it an answer, it would be I'm just trying to change behaviors, and. If I can be a change agent, again, for like just 10% of my friends, that puts over 500 people that I'm that I'm changing, according to, you know, Facebook friends list. So if I can get 10% of the people just to think things through a little bit more, do things a little bit less selfish. And, you know, if I had to give myself a motto, my motto is simply easy as pie. Just don't be a dick. Like if you're doing something that... It doesn't even have to be right or wrong. And I think this is a big problem. We're hella binary when it comes to right and wrong. And there's laws passed and, you know, hey. Oh. Don't call right now, Topher. (laughs) Um, There's laws passed and people say, oh, well, so-and-so is not against the law, so it must be okay. And it's like, the law is not the point. What you're doing is kind of dick. So it doesn't matter if it's against the law or not. How about... Let's just not be a dick first. We'll worry about the law second. And if you're not being a dick, you're probably not breaking any laws ever. Yeah. Well, so I, I don't think like we need more laws like about energy consumption, but probably better incentives that like recognizes our impact on on like our consumption. I mean, energy and food consumption and how it affects the planet. That's a uh, I think that's one a hard thing to quantify. And like we're still trying to figure figure that out. But two, um, right now they're just not. There's just not big enough. Like if you could, if you could make like an extra six hundred dollars a month for energy storage, like that'd be dope, right? That'd like be dope. everyone would just do it, and like you don't even have to have an opinion on climate change to do it. All right, so help me out with this because I I think I remember, but this was a couple years back, and there's been a lot of alcohol in my head since that time. You guys had this plan 
where you were selling companies LED bulbs, but allowing people to help with the cost of the changeover by crowdfunding the the switching to LED bulbs. Oh, uh, yeah, if, yeah, that was, if I remember uh, correctly. Um, so that was a project we did with the Blue Planet Foundation uh, where we built a, a crowdfunding uh, platform that allowed people to pledge money to... Um, to nonprofits that wanted to do like, you know, replace their bulbs or um, replace their HVAC systems to, to more energy efficient ways. And, um, and they, they raised quite a bit of money. I think it was, uh, I, man, I don't really know, but I know it's in, I think it was over uh, $500,000 or maybe close to a million, but I think it was somewhere in that range. It wasn't like a, a small amount of money, um, but they've been, uh, um, they saved a lot of carbon with that. So what if we were able to scale that on a private level? Huh. Like, um, all right, so for, for instance, I changed every bulb in my house. Let me do an inventory real quick. There's four, four, there's eight, 16, 24, 30. I have 42 light bulbs in my house. Yeah. I switched every single one of them to LED. And if I did that in one fell swoop, because I'm using the Philips Hue system, that would be 50 bucks a piece. I'd be, you know, $840 in the hole, right? Yeah. But what I did was I swapped them out two at a time for the better part of about a year, right? So now my entire house is covered by Philips Hue, Siri, and Alexa. You know, I can be like, Alexa, turn on the kitchen, Alexa, turn off the kitchen. I, I totally hope you're turning off people's light bulbs right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I shouldn't say Alexa. Siri too loud. <laughs> Alexa. She, she's over there. She's going to start yelling. Um, and, and so, I, I, remind me of the Alexa part. I have something that came up the other day, which I think is kind of funny. Alexa, call 911. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> so, I, uh, it took me a while, but once I got the whole thing done, Literally, my bill dropped about $95 a month just for switching them all out. And so when I was first doing it, everyone's like, man, you're crazy. Those bulbs are 50 bucks a piece. It's so expensive. But to go from saving almost $100 a month, it took me less than eight months to recoup the entire cost of my whole system. And that's actually adding the Echo Dots, you know, the two Echo Dots that yeah. I have that run everything. Um also, what I did was for the kitchen and the bathroom, they're motion sense. So the thing that I'm famous for is for getting to turn off the light. So I walk in the kitchen, light comes on, I do stuff, I leave, light goes off three minutes later. Walk in the bathroom, light goes on, I have the bathroom set for 10. Because that way, if you're in the shower and the motion sensor can't see you and you're taking too long, mm -hmm. the lights will go off. And that's a reminder, hey, Dick, you're taking too long of a shower. You're wasting water, you know. You so, got like a little Tony Stark, like little pad yeah, setup. Yeah, you know, you know, I know Jarvis, um, which is funny. And, and that was my Alexa point. The, the subservient assistants have female names and the genius assistants have male names. Oh, wow. That's really fucked up. Right. Watson, <laughs> yeah. Jarvis, Hal. That they're all men. Bixby. Bixby. Oh, I forgot about Bixby. <laughs> they're all men, right? Yeah. But then, uh, hey, Alexa, bitch, which, which time Siri. is my appointment is Alexa and Siri. Yeah. I just want to point it out, tech people. Stop being dicks. Make make the subservient dudes guys. Too. Now, you can switch Siri to a guy voice. That's not the same thing. Don't get cute. Yeah. They, whoever originally thought of it was named after the daughter Iris, but still yet. Yeah. I just, yo, if they start giving them black names, I'm going to fuck somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> But hey, LaQuisha, what's, uh, what's on my appointment? <laughs> Nick, you ain't got nothing to do today. <laughs> Are you gonna be really fucked up if, like, um, if like robotic machine intelligence, like stuff that is actually gonna like run to a store and pick something up for you, like if that if that had black names, <laughs> like <laughs> Tyrone, get me cigarettes. See, I, do we have to start hurting some developers? <laughs> so uh, I know that was a weird tangent, but I thought of it on one of my my random elevated sessions. I thought about it. That, no, that's yeah, really like, fucked up. It's true, right? Yeah, and I never thought of it until now, but is what it is so hopefully the next person that come out with an intelligent assistant uh yeah let's work on that let's figure out yeah like what, what can they do to like sam gender bias yeah, gender, yeah, gender, gender bias gender and, androgynous like uh 
voice. Wait, wait. So, okay. It's cool because you're older, so you get it before we had all these weird names. You know what word I use a lot now, but I hate the fact that I have to use it? What? Cisgender. Oh. Like, I, I don't know. All right, so... I had this conversation with somebody the other day. And okay, so the show is we do tangents, so deal with it, people. I had this this conversation the other day where somebody was kind of getting lippy because they're like, I don't know what to call, you know, so and so because they've, you know, they're post op now. I'm like, you call them she. Yeah. And they're like, Well, why? I'm like, because she wanted to be she. She spent 80, 90 grand to become she. You call her she. And mm -hmm. none of this Zer with the X and all this kid Canada. Like, I saw this thing. They have 78 gender pronouns. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. I'm like, come on, bro. Leave it back to he and she. If someone identifies what, what they identify with, that's what you call them. Yeah. Right? Like, even people who aren't post-op. My, my female friends who are proper terminology, I don't know. So I'm going to stick to my old school racist terminology, butch. I call them by their dude name and I call them dude. I say, what's up my, in the dude form <laughs> because they want to be dudes. Like yeah. you give the people what they want. Like why we got to be, it's not up to you. But you as an ancient one are like, like, oh, like why can't you guys just use my vernacular? Because, because. I, and I thought about that. Trust me. I, I always think about both sides of things, but like half the time I, I discover the people who are making the change, who want to do the change, mm -hmm. they themselves don't necessarily want all the extra stuff too. It's all the social justice warriors that are trying to do good by them. So we should call them some zur. Well, I think but, it's like, you know, I, I don't know. I, I wonder about this. Like I'm not, I'm not offended by any of it. Like, I'm not offended either. I'm just, like, I'm, it's I'm a struggle. Offended. I'm trying not to offend people. But like, I'm not offended by social justice warriors necessarily. Like, I think it's kind of silly to be upset about things like that. But, but I'm not like, you know, I don't really get up in arms about social, social justice warriors. You know what warriors. I get pissed off at them for? I just find it really hard to say social justice warriors. So do I, because it's ignorant. Uh, what I get really pissed off at them for is when they're trying to do things that quote unquote support the the black struggle but sometimes they're making it worse <laughs> by the things that they're doing or saying i'm like you're the point where you're no longer helping you're actually making the situation worse and sometimes i find that i'm not a racist people or more of a pain in the ass the straight kkk dude i can deal with i'm saying like maybe it's <laughs> like the birth of like a new culture right true, like, true. like a new culture that is struggling to find its way it doesn't really like hasn't they spent so much time not being identified and not being not not being respected that um like when they finally get like a little toehold they're probably they might be overreacting they right? gotta take it yeah and, and like ah like why didn't you guys recognize us all this time it's always been like this and it's a movement <laughs> i mean i mean maybe it is kind of but like well i definitely i think i agree with you there because i'm the first person to say that language evolves right so i get mad at all the people who say that's not how you say this this is how you say that and i go yeah but the the overall understanding of the sentence the person put out the context was well understood by all parties involved so correcting them is kind of irrelevant like even well yeah i mean your point is just like i agree with you just don't stop being so dickish about it yeah 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 so that's what i think i'm saying like when someone puts out a really valid point and they do something like switch a pronoun or you know, even make a typo. You always got the typo Nazis. Ah, you, you're dumb because you did it wrong. I'm like, that person just dropped 99% science and they have one letter out of place and you try to dismiss their whole argument over a typo. Well, it's kind of like this reaction to like, you know. Kofefe? Uh, yeah, Kofefe <laughs> and that whole thing. Like it's not... Um, I, it's not rational. It's emotional no. for sure, right? Yes. Like, 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 because you can you can say anything completely rational, and be hyper emotional about it, and it's gonna tr it's gonna rub people the wrong way. And I think like too much too much of uh, you're just dropping <laughs> dropping shit. Hey, Tove, come here. <laughs> I forgot something. Sorry, um, our executive producer, Topher, walked in the room. Hey, fill, fill these up with something brown. Jeez. <laughs> this, this show about to get good. <laughs> Thanks, Tove. Um, you know, in, in, the, in, the same, in the same breath, I think uh, one of the things that's hella funny is hard for me because 
I have been trying to become better at the way I handle conversations when I'm on the opposite end of the argument. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to be better at before I even open my mouth. I'm going to try to understand both sides. Yeah. Right. Um, I had a this is going to be a touchy one. But I'm going to make it super short and try to stay out of it. Uh, but I had a touchy conversation with somebody who is a quote unquote devout Christian and they were going on about the whole like abortion thing. And I was like, do you know, there's a uh, here. Yeah. Salute. Hey, thank you. Ch- this is slightly off camera. What are we drinking? Tof? He don't even remember. I got to edit out the gap because, oh, he busting on my good stuff. This is Cheetah. This is a uh, Suntory whiskey from Japan. It's brought by Christian Self for Bevy. Thank you, Christian. Oh, wow. Beautiful. This is good stuff, right? It's good. Oh, that's good. That's tasty. Oh, man. I became one of those assholes that say beautiful before they drink. <laughs> I can make you a beautiful. I know what they call that drink that because you drink that and the ugliest people is like, oh, you're so beautiful. <laughs> anyway, so my that's point really is, nice. I, I, I was pointing out to the person, I was like, you know, that there's strict, distinct passages in the Bible where they talk about, you know, making a portion, a potion to make a woman miscarry a child if she was, you know, unfaithful to the husband. And the person told me, no, it's not. And I'm like, bro, I'm as atheist as atheists come. And I can not only tell you the passage almost verbatim, I can tell you the chapter and verse. And the person is, is, is numbers uh, 15 through 31, if you want to be, you know, <laughs> In case you're trying to test me, somebody listening going, Doc, don't know. Yeah, I know. I went to Catholic school. Anyway, I was like, go read Numbers 15, you know, through 31 and uh, and, and figure it out. Right. And then the person was like, oh, well, uh, and I was like, no, see, so many of them, they, they, they wear the badge. They do the Facebook Christian. They talk all this smack and like, you know, I'm going to hell and all this other stuff. And then when you call them on their stuff that they should technically know if you're going to call yourself that and they don't even know it. Mm-hmm. And, and I kind of like that reminds me to not just win an argument because, you know, I can do that a lot. I'm pretty well versed, but it's the point of I want to learn both sides of the argument so that I can have a better understanding of my point. I think the reason why everybody went so stupid on Trump and the Kofefe thing is he never admits when he's wrong. <laughs> And instead of just saying he was wrong, okay, that was a typo, let it go. He could have shut the whole thing down and go, all right, people, that was a typo. You guys are hilarious. Let it go. But no, and it wasn't a typo. I did it on purpose. I feel like this whole thing is kind of an, like an exercise in understanding what our ego is. Like, his, his assholiness is making me check the living hell out of my ego these days. Yeah. It's crazy. But, oh yeah, so like this, like your whole thing about how Christians identify as Christians and... um and they they might not know scripture as well as you do, but but um, that's still how they identify themselves as. And like, what else? How else would you identify them other than to say that they are a Christian, right? So like, I identify them as Spencer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I I'm one thing I've, I have been I, actually last couple of episodes I've talked about this. Mm-hmm. Um, we are not half the identities that we think we are. Well, yeah, but like labels, labels are part of our identity, right? Or they're part of our ego, you know, they're part of like, that's how we want to project ourselves out to the world. And there is a need for that. I mean, I think there's like a, there's like a very primal human need to like classify things. Yeah. Yes, that's true. So like, so to classify things based on your ego makes sense, right? But I think there's, we start, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We start subclassifying things, and a lot of times we should stay at spectrum, and we get to phylum, and it's not necessary, right? Or for instance, right, like you and I are just males, mm-hmm. okay? The other identifying stuff, like you know, Japanese American or you know, Black American or Black Latino American or fat or whatever, is, those are the ones that start to cause trouble when it's not necessary yeah and and then people have a tendency to put it in conversations was not necessary there is a point where the classification needs to go because we're trying to buy shirts right all right i gotta get you a schmedium and i gotta get me a circus bear double x right that's different okay 
But the part where it's like a uh, this guy's going to come in, he's going to drop off a package, and uh, you just sign for it and let it go. When you come in the next day and somebody goes, oh yeah, yeah, the, the freaking Japanese dude dropped off the package. That was unnecessary. And okay, stop calling me people. That was unnecessary, and it didn't add anything to the thing. But people do it by habit because they get fed it so much by the quote unquote quote unquote people above us. Yeah, right. So, in in this has kind of gone away a little bit, except for on Fox. Back in the day, it used to be a man walked into the Seven Eleven and robbed the joint, mm-hmm. right? And then somewhere in the mid seventies to eighties, it became. A uh, black man walked into the 7-Eleven and robbed it. Mexican walked into the 7-Eleven and robbed it. Mm-hmm. But if the person was Caucasian, it was a man walked into 7-Eleven and robbed it. Oh, yeah. They started to fix that towards the early 2000s. Well, I mean, like, you, you can't... I, I'm saying it's part of our nature. And that's, like, that's a hard thing to control when something's part of your nature, right? Like, we're, we are problem-solving entities that, like, want to... Uh, want to organize based on our belief systems you know like uh there was that you ever read that book sapiens no gotta add that to the list yeah they talk about that about like how we are like part of part of the reason that we've been so uh like successful as a species is because we're able to believe in things that don't exist Right, like money is a money is a system that that we that only exists because we believe in it. Like the the mushroom gives zero shits about what your bank account holds. Right, right. So right. like no one no one cares outside of our species. It just doesn't exist to the rest, to everyone else. Um, but religion is also one of those things that kind of uh, exists because we believe in it. Like the the uh, my my dog does not care about. Um, God or or the you know the the conflict between like Islam and Judaism like my dog cares nothing about that kind of stuff and so it only exists within our with our own within our own minds um where was I going with this I was going I, I don't somewhere. know but why you're doing that like when people are like what are what doc is doing I am actually buying the book right now because that's what I do when I, somebody tells me to read a book I don't write it down I go buy it right now because <laughs> it needs to be bought all right, cool. This book is purchased. Oh, so what I'm saying is that like identity and belief systems, they're they're really tied together, and labels, labels, identities, and belief systems. I see them as like really, really connected to one another. So you got like, uh, if someone has um, identifies as a Christian, to you that label might not that that label might not be accurate, but to them that's part of their identity. Like that's how they've they've. Um, been part of society and community is is by that label right 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 i mean so like i don't know if there's there's a better label for for someone that's like you know a community christian or like a social christian like that seems kind of insulting to the you know like to something that's part of your hardcore beliefs i mean when you think about it that's how we ended up with so many religions anyway i guess the thing is I, I would I want to put this on record. I don't have a problem with religions at all. Like I think if that's what it takes to make you a better person. Like I look at somebody like my boy Brad, who I absolutely love to death, and, and he's my favorite Christian. Why? Brad never tries to tell me I need to go to church. He never tries to tell me that I'm going to go to hell because I do stuff the way I do it. He never tells me that I, I, I'm gay, so I should get electrocution therapy so that it comes gets out of me, Mike Pence. Um, <laughs> you know, like. He never says. Any, I'm not gay, people. By the way, I'm a strong supporter. Well, you're but like a little gay, though. Like, I am a little. There's that one time. Well, that was that was Ryan, so that doesn't count <laughs> because Ryan's Chinese. So, um, that yeah, it's just I I get angry at the the people who wear it as a badge or wear it like a piece of jewelry, right? Also. I mean, it argumentatively can be said that the majority of the conflicts through history is has been because someone didn't believe what someone else believed. So they believe that they deserve more. Mm-hmm. So they believe that they could oppress someone in order to scale up. That kind of stuff drives me insane. And also, I think it the most bothers me when someone will say that because of Christianity, I want to 
all the black people to get out of America. Mm-hmm. Because of Christianity, I want all the Mexicans to get out of America. I'm like, Mexicans go to church more than you. Do you know that? Like, you ever been to, I, I grew up, Tino, seven days of freaking week church. That's why I don't go no more. <laughs> You know, uh, church on Monday, no, uh, church on Tuesday. And then the white kids at school was like, y'all don't go just go to church on Sunday. But at the same token, half of them were like, I'm a heathen. Yeah. And I was like, not according to grandma, because grandma's like, I got to be, a, I would kick your ass, but I got to be in church at five. <laughs> you know? Well, part of me thinks that like this whole division of culture is like kind of a part of, uh, this is going to sound really callous, but like calling the species a little bit yeah. where like um, nature, nature kind of calls for conflict in order for progress to be made. And like that conflict is always kind of shitty, uh, but then progress is made. And like the same thing for human history and the way that we've like governed ourselves or like um, had cultural movements. There's always like huge conflict. And then and then progress is made somehow. I'm I'm hoping that the conflict here is between one of compassion and one of ego. Um, being able to put yourself in the shoes of, of a fellow human being, in and versus thinking only about how your identity is being projected to other human beings. Yeah, I think that identity thing has become a uh, kind of sort of a big deal, like. Some, uh, many, not some, I'm going to say many people, until you round about 60, you're still somewhat trying to find your identity or you let someone else give you an identity and then you spend your whole time trying to live up to that identity. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, I don't want anybody to think of me as a tech guy. I love tech, but people are like, oh, this doc, like he's my tech guy. (laughs) I don't, I don't like that. No, I'm just a dude. Right. Yeah. Um, I just happen to be good at this tech stuff, but that, that's not that's not my identity. I don't identify with my job. I don't identify with my skin color. I'm starting to become a little bit more of the quintessential angry black man. But honestly, and that's the first time I'm going to say this out loud publicly. Part of that is because growing up, I tried to suppress it. I tried to hide it hmm. because it was easier than dealing with all the racist white folks in my neighborhood. You know what I mean? Like you, you felt like you tried to su- suppress like your black culture. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And you know, I was, you know, I was into my hip hop thing, but I was also into punk rock. You know, so I had this problem where in my hood, I'm fighting with folks because I'm wearing a Dead Kennedys jacket. You know, but then at school, I'm fighting with folks because I'm wearing a Run DMC T-shirt. Yeah. You know, and it was like, yo, I can like both. It doesn't. Like, you know what I'm saying? My skin color has jack to do with the music I listen to. I listen to classical music. That doesn't make me uh, Austrian. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I will I will listen to uh, Tchaikovsky or Chopin or Bach. Bach is my dude. Like, <laughs> if, if, if Bach was alive right now, that would be the dude that I would be blazing with, hanging out, you know, trying to understand. Man, this Baroque joint is a little complicated, Bach. What the hell? What kind of strain you on this week? You know, you know, and he's like, oh, I got that, that, that uh, OG Chopin Beethoven Kush, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, so I just hated the fact that everybody wanted to box me into categories. So I'm trying to unbox. But I hope a lot of times when I, I tell people all the time, part of this podcast, I'm talking out loud as my therapy, hoping somebody will grab a nugget. And when next time they're taking a the shit, they'll think deeper. I, I think. One thing that reason why we've been friends the whole time is uh, good butt sex and really uh, we're frothy. both <laughs> we're both critical thinkers. I, the thing that made me fall in love with you from day one is you're a critical thinker. Too many of my friends, I think, don't think enough. And I, I, I know I can't control the world. I can't change the world, but I damn sure going to try. I just want everybody to think a little hard and a little deeper about even some of the simplest things, mm-hmm. you know, the simplest things like. If the car in front of you takes off and you take off exactly the right amount of seconds and everybody behind you, 10 cars in a row, did the same thing, traffic got lighter for the day. Oh, shit. Are we going to talk about traffic? Oh, God, I'm scared. (laughs) That that one person that's looking at their phone and they take off 15 seconds late, that person just dragged, jacked up a whole bunch of people. Like, I am a strong believer in chaos theory. I'm a strong believer in the things that I do will affect people six people removed. 
right? If you have a good time tonight, you might go home and then call up Bryce and be like, man, sorry, bro, I ain't talked to you in a week today. I was just hanging out with Doc. He's asking me how you was doing. I just want to say what's up. And he'd be like, damn, you know, I, 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 I called my brother. I, I wasn't planning to call my brother, but now I just see that you, you can call your brother today. <laughs> what's up, Waffle Beaver? <laughs> you know, that's the stupidest name ever, but I love it. Instagram Waffle Beaver. <laughs> Instagram Waffle Beaver. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I believe in passing it forward. You know, my friends say to me, when I go to Starbucks and I and I say something hilarious to some random person, they're like, why do you just say dumb shit to strangers? Because I want that person to go and say something dumb to another stranger. And the, if, if eight people get lifted by dumb comments and a little laugh, you know, I did my job. Yeah. You know that's, what I'm saying? That's compassion. That's like an important human quality that we're all capable of. And I think people express that like all the time it's it's when we start looking at each other as enemies that like we we turn off that compassion switch right we're like you're not like me i'm not going to put myself in your shoes you're you're the enemy and you think a certain way and i think a different way it's like a really weird it's a really weird thing but we all do it and like but with our friends and with our family we think about like like what if i was in your shoes what if i was um what if you were in my shoes like how how would i react you know you put that like that compassionate thought like process into play. I think that's kind of that's the big war that's gonna gonna happen. I mean, there's gonna be like you know the other shitty kind of wars, but but the war like over how our human minds function and able to organize and and help each other and and move the species for. I think that's kind of the uh, and and that like it's kind of outside of like structures of government and all that stuff, right? It's like a it's the way that we're looking at ourselves for the first time. And I think like the internet and social media have kind of like provided that mirror like at, like at a species level that we didn't have before and that's kind of why it's happening now that's, that's a weird tangent <laughs> no no that's hella deep though like we, when you think about it like that is hella deep man it's crazy you know I often but traffic doc traffic no 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 don't do it cause you know once you start me you can't stop me dude the, the thing I, th- I think of often and I've been the next time I get into a heated argument with somebody that I feel like I'm going to lose my cookies over, mm-hmm. I just want to tell them, I'm like, I know you're looking at me and you're thinking what you're thinking because you've been taught to think that way about me. But if we were able to pull out a cup of blood right now and we tested it, I'm a 70% chance you're O positive just like me. Mm-hmm. Right? 70% no, chance. I'm cha- not. I'm like, also not HIV negative like no, you. No, no, <laughs> oh, wait, no. Negative wait, means, means you got I, it. Oh, shit. I, oh, no, I have HIV. Oh, my God, bro. I never forget that test. <laughs> that was the funniest thing. Uh, no, but I'm like, you know, 70% of the population, you know, they're rocking the OPAS, right? Mm-hmm. I go, you probably got up this morning on your way walking to the bathroom, scratched your butt cheek because you slept on that side. You went to the bathroom, you know, you brushed your teeth, you know, took your morning motion, you know, had your coffee or your tea or your beer or whatever your swag is. But like you're just as human as I am. So why are you treating me as a non-human? You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I think that's the easiest way to squelch arguments nowadays. Yeah, it's because everything has gotten emotional now, right? Like we don't have an objective reason for government. We have emotional reasons for government. We don't have objective reasons for voting for a politician. We have emotional reasons for voting well, for a Well, part of it is emotion, emotional, and I think the other part of it is, um, I want to say hereditary, but that's not the right word, yeah. uh, generational. Um, you know, if, if, if you poll half the people in this town and ask them, why are you a Democrat, they won't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, no, that's what mom and dad was, so I am. Same reason why half the people are whatever religion they call mom and dad were so they yeah i think we're the bluest state so like and and that's because uh we're i mean it's probably changing a little now but that's because most of the um plantation workers like i'm a descendant of plantation workers like like Me so too. many other people here <laughs> oh, yeah. different different kind of pl- workers <laughs> my <laughs> you guys got paid yeah they were paid shit yeah we, oh snap we did something wrong i just created a party file well, you could argue it's well, no, it's not. It's very not the same at all. Um, but I don't know. I don't know, Doc. Who made that? Who made, Somebody made that dumbass argument somewhere along the line um, during the campaign about, I think it was Ben Carson, if I remember correctly. He had some dumbass argument about, you know, these guys were workers. I'm like, no, bro. Indentured slavery is not working. Not, not even indentured. I mean, like, there's a big difference between indentured servants and, and slavery. 
Like, you know, when you have a child and knowing that that child is going to face slavery, like, that's a really fucked up thing to face. True that. Um, uh, did, you wa- did you watch that 13th documentary? No, I just saw it, though. I just saw the... Um, the trailer for it? Yeah. Yeah. It's like... It's like systemic, systemic racism. But, but you know what you said I about... I was going to ask that question today. I was going to ask... I was going to propose the question to Facebook when... I say systemic racism. What do you think I'm talking about? Because I think a lot of people hear the terminology Mm -hmm. and don't understand it. And a week ago during one of my rants while we were driving to Alamoana, I explained to Topher what he's over there, what what systemic racism is, because he grew up in Hawaii. Like Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know what it is, but it's even here in Hawaii. Like oh, there's a yeah. lot of systemic racism here in Hawaii. Yeah, but the fun kind, not not the bad kind. Even the bad kind. Yeah, um, I'm sure. I'm sure. I was on the offshore kind. podcast. Remember? Yeah. Um, and when you listen to that trial, like there were things like you know, oh yeah, local kids couldn't be out at a certain time at night. You know, whatever is in like you know these guys got blamed for something that they didn't do. Like yo, it's 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 a crazy thing. I didn't know there was a movie about it, but I've been meaning to go pull that. That was a great into. podcast, the the offshore podcast. If if you haven't listened to it, check it out. Yeah. Offshore podcast, uh, Jessica Carroll. It's like girl. this American Life type of quality. Yeah, and and really good storytelling. It's the dumbest thing on that podcast is me. Other than that, it's good. <laughs> nah, you're great, man. <laughs> it was good. Now you know. And again, I okay. So one of the things that really chaps my nads is I look at. When I get racist comments from, you know, ignorant people, I just let it go. Mm -hmm. When I get racist comments from, like, blood Hawaiian, I get kind of mad. I'm like, bro, we've been through some of the same shit. Mm. Like, my people have been treated just like your people, except for it wasn't our land that was taken, but a lot of other things. I mean, minus the land, we have suffered some of the exact same struggles. How can you take... The hatred that they taught you for me and pass it on to me when you have suffered through the same shit. Like you've had your identity raped, your cultural appropriated, your people actually raped. And for the first, anybody tries to come back at me and go, you shouldn't say that about, no, so, yeah, we were raped. Well, that's like, again, that's like the ego versus the compassion part, right? Like, I think I think when you face those kind of situations that the knee jerk reaction is to be like, like, Look at you, you you should know better than this, right? You want to shame them. You want to tell No, I don't. I, I try to teach them. I definitely try not to shame them. Yeah. I'm like, you know what's hella funny to me is you're standing there, you're calling me all of this stuff, but you're wearing a pair of Jordans, <laughs> right? You're rocking a Kobe Bryant jersey, you know what I'm saying? And you're wearing a snapback. You basically appropriated 80% of my culture and turn around and call me a nigga. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, how are you going to dress like me? I'm not wearing a fucking loincloth calling you Kanaka. <laughs> and I just throw it right back at them. And then some of them get it. Some people, they want to scrap. And then they figure out maybe I shouldn't scrap this dude. But, you know, I mean, it just... It just oh, I would beat the shit out of you, Doc. Oh, we will oh, fight. God. This will hey, happen. Hey, Conor McGregor is on. <laughs> oh, there you go. And then, I've been in touch on this. You know what's pissing me off about that fight? Number one, the fight is a joke. I'm going to just put that out there for all you people that love that shit. The fight is an absolute joke. But what's really irritating, it's not good for the sport. It's not good for boxing. It's not good for MMA. Why? Because now they've turned it into a black versus white, like racist type thing. Mm. You know, Floyd was not right for picking up the flag and doing whatever. But those were reactions to read to me, boy, dance for me, boy. You know, shit like that, like calling him a monkey and all of that. You know, they um, you know what? You know what, though? They're going to make so much money. Yeah, they're going to make so much money off of our need to watch two people fight in a race war. (laughs) And then what's so stupid, though, is like Connor's from the side of the Irish people that were basically treated like the black people. So he should know better. I don't think I don't think Connor's fighting for racist reasons. At least I hope not. But him but him bringing that shit up and saying it, it fires up a portion of the country that needs to stay dormant. I didn't see that. Yo, Brian was dumb. Like he just basically got in his face and was like, dance me boy oh really and then, like calling him a monkey and he's like you know what you can't read like no one's ever said floyd can or cannot read that's never been put mm-hmm. out in the press like he don't know that and if he did know that you shouldn't use that to mock him because there's kids right now that can't read that won't ask for help because they're afraid someone's going to clown them mm-hmm. you know the same thing we, we were talking about earlier there's people that have serious problems that can't ask for help because we make fun of the mentally infirmed in this country. Yeah. 
when we should be supporting the mentally infirmed in this country. You know, people that get arrested for drugs oftentimes aren't derelictic. They have a mental problem that's making them want that drug. Yeah. I I mean, do you think Connor knew that? Like, I don't think he knows whether he can read or not. Yeah. But in his brain, I mean, do you think think he made that connection? You know, I'm going to put it on, not on Connor. You know, I'm going to put it on. I'm going to put it on through years and years and years of not even stereotyping, of archetyping Mm -hmm. on television and media. Because people not from this country, because I have traveled around the world, right? People not from this country, the only thing they know about black people when I get there is that I'm a criminal, I'm an athlete, I probably like hip hop. If they go down on me, they might choke. I had to throw that last one in, uh, you know. But like, I know for a fact. <laughs> no, you know, I don't know for like, a fact. Like, the, way too many gay jokes in the, this. I know, right? The thing. I'm sorry, my Ryan, gay friends. <laughs> Ryan and Chad. <laughs> uh, the the thing is, if you never saw a black person in real life, some of the first things that come to your head would be only what you got from media. Mm-hmm. So I can understand if he didn't know that where he might have got the basic stereotypes. I think the no to press the button of calling someone boy in the way that he said it might have come from TV. Mm-hmm. Now, in in England, I watch a lot of soccer in England. They say that all the time, but they don't say it with the boy. <laughs> it's the tonality, right? When okay. they're saying they're talking about a young lad, somebody under the age of 25, they'll be like, man, that boy, that, that boy is good or whatever. And, you know, just like if I say, oh, Spencer, that's my boy. That's a different conversation. Mm-hmm. But when you say boy with the I at the end, yeah. yo, bruh, you're pushing a button and you know you're pressing a button. <sighs> huh. You're pushing a button that will get pushed back. I didn't see that. Bruh, you got to find it. Wow. Well, I mean, I think like, that that's like a pretty clear example of systemic racism. That Baltimore example, also an example of systemic racism, right? Like we're going to create laws so that uh, we can round up black people and put them into prisons. And we're going to make all this money off of the prisons. It's like, it's like, a, uh, I mean, it's the slave trade, basically. It's, it's not so much here in Hawaii, but we do have it here in Hawaii, but it's a little different. But if we were in the mainland, right? And I was outside and let's say I had a bag, you know, two finger bag and I had, you know, bag of dank. I get pulled over. I'm going to go do time. You get pulled over it's going to get confiscated from you. And then you're going to get asked to go to some kind of training to make you better. Mm -hmm. Um, The Oxycontin kids are just as white as anybody else. The Oxycontin kids get sent to um, what's the one on the infomercial? Uh, changes or phases or whatever you oh. want to call these rehab clinics, right? Yeah. When the celebrities get busted, they get sent to rehab clinics, right? They get they sent to White House International. <laughs> Yo, my people, we get thrown in jail, right? For the same exact shit. Yeah, and then and you get to you get to make license plate at five cents an hour, and um, and that is called slavery. I mean, that's there's no other real real word for it. It's just like slavery for a generation at a time instead of like instead of uh, like every if every black prisoner when they reproduce had to produce another slave, right? That's a that's a better version of the slavery system, but that's like you know not good for the slaves. Right, right, right. And um, but that's the only thing that's missing between like like you know pre Civil War slavery and post Civil War slavery. Sla- yeah. slavery still exists. It's just called the prison system now. Yes, and it's and it's set up and especially when you realize the places with the most egregious. Uh, Troubles in prison systems happen to be Louisiana, Arizona, Mississippi, yeah. <laughs> Florida. And, and like, to, to compensate for, um, for you know, uh, producing new slaves through, through uh, birth, like, or like ownership of, of uh, what, what's it called? Like your children. Um, offspring? They, yeah, offspring. They, they created laws like um, you can't own... You can't have a you can't have a firearm within any school district or any church. You can't. Um, there are going to be loitering laws now, so you can't just like hang out at a corner. If you're hanging out at a corner for too long, you're going to get arrested. Uh, if you're going to jaywalk, then it's really really easy to identify black people and like and take them into prison for jaywalking. Uh, you like skateboarding? That's probably not like 
I mean, I don't know how skateboarding. Skateboarding is, like, is big in the black community now. Yeah. Compliments of Lupe Fiasco and Pharrell, Skateboard P, and Little Wheezy. Yeah. Some of the top guys on the Mountain Dew tour are all black kids, which is crazy to me because it hasn't quite crossed over to the X Game tour. Yeah. But Mountain Dew is like, we're not going to sleep on this. So they've been high. Like, you really, I think oh, in, the, in we, the top 10 guys, like, I think there's about six of them. That's cool. It's crazy. Uh, I was going to say weed laws. Weed laws are the big one. Weed laws are the big one. Weed laws are the big one. You and that was a lot of black people made for, up. for weed. Oh, yeah. Black guys going to smoke weed and rape your women. Yeah. Like, that was that was crazy. That's Reefer Madness, if you haven't seen it. Um, that's a great movie to sort of get into. I think, to me, one of the ones that drives me the most crazy is the conversations that come out. Well, that was, you know, almost 100 years ago. Let it go. You know, mm -hmm. you guys don't have the same problems anymore. Like, let it go. And, and not even thinking about the stuff you were talking about. Back after the Depression, right, or when we had the migration to the West, the government was like, if you go West, young man, I will give you this piece of land. But you need to grow soybeans or you need to grow tobacco or you need to grow corn so that you can help feed the rest of America. You know who didn't qualify for those plots? Mm -hmm. Us, right? Oh, well, that's so surprising. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but so even when you look at, you know, like, well, my family, they worked hard. My grandpa was a farmer. He was a sharecropper. And look, he made his way up. And now, you know, he works for the biggest crook in the world, agricultural company, Connect. No, I'm just, you know, just making a point. Uh, but, you know, they moved up and, you know, now they got a big farmhouse and they got like, you know, 500 head of cattle and blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, first of all, the original land, if your name isn't fucking step through the clouds with sheep, you stole that land. Okay. Or the yeah. government took it and gave it to you. Yeah. Right? So you got a handout. But yet they would say, all they do is come here and take handouts. Guys that have the farms right now with the illegal aliens working on it that are taking it part of the system and they're making it better, Kudos to you, right? But there's other guys that are sitting on farmland right now that was either stolen from the Native Americans or handed to them by the government after it was stolen from a Native American, and they built generational wealth, and they're sitting there looking, Jeff, Jeff Beauregard motherfucking Sessions, looking down on us like we're doing something bad, you know? And I'm like, Jeff, the reason why your great-grandpappy, Pop-Pop, was a sharecropper, you piece of shit, is they gave you the fucking land, you... What's his name? Uh, uh, yeah, not Game of Thrones. The dude with the ring? Give me my precious Smeagol. You Smeagol-looking motherfucker. Lord of the Rings, man. Come on, don't, don't mix those <laughs> Sorry. up. That's not cool. <laughs> Sorry. Nerds, nobody hit me. But you know what I'm saying? That Smeagol-looking motherfucker has the audacity to look at people like they're somehow fucking shit up. I was like, you, your family got the money because you got given the land. Mm -hmm. You dick. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's, so how do you, there's how, no there's no Native American last name sessions. So how do you how do you change that, right? Like how do you change that mentality? Fix the fucking history books. I'm sorry, I'm gonna get mad, people. Yeah. When I was in school, and it's it, it's a little different now. I but think that's a good start fixing the history books. When I was in school, the first thing talk about uh, systemic racism. The first thing I learned about black people in the history books is that we were slaves. Hmm. Right? First thing. The very first thing. Okay. Okay, when do you start taking history? I think it's sixth grade. Yeah. You get like basic history, like the cutesy shit, like Thanksgiving. Oh, it was in Turkey. Oh, know? right. So you're not taught that like there's a long yeah. lineage of people from Africa. It's like you're slaves. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? They bring you straight to slavery. Yeah, yeah. And they talk about slavery. And then they talk about the cool shit, you know, like Harriet Tubman, you know, she, she got these slaves out and then Abraham Lincoln freed y'all. And then they don't start talking about us again until we get to Frederick Douglass, not the Frederick Douglass that Trump thinks of, but the other Frederick <laughs> Douglass. And then they might get around to George Washington Carver. And again, these lessons only come in fucking February. Right. You know, for for like a week in February, they break us, you know, they break us eight or nine motherfuckers that we're supposed to respect. But a lot of legitimate people, they never get spoke of. You know the real McCoy, that terminology? Mm -hmm. That comes from a dude that ran away from slavery, worked on the railroads, and he was a grease man. 
Mm-hmm. A grease man was not the kind you're thinking of, Chad. A grease man was a guy that at every couple That's of awful. stops <laughs> had to get out and put the thick grease on all of the bearings and tires, I mean, wheels and shit on the train so the train could go. Mm-hmm. Right? So he was working on the railroad as a grease man. And it was a shit job. But he got away with people uh, messing with him because you're half the time so dirty and covered in grease. People that would fuck with didn't necessarily know he was black. Hmm. Cause you're that dirty. It's that kind of shitty job. Yeah. Right. Well, he decided I'm gonna make a box where I can put a thinner, less viscous version of this grease in, and the rotation of the wheel would pump the grease to the rest of the wheels. So we don't gotta stop. So the fucking oil pump was invented by a black dude named Elijah McCoy. Hmm. And then when people started buying them shits. They were buying up, down, left, and right. He was smart. He he had a, a white dude sort of act as his, you know, go-between because people wouldn't buy shit from him. And people were like, yo, about eight other people tried to sell me one of them boxes. I don't want that. That's a shitty box. That box is a Sam Walton ripoff. I want the real McCoy. Okay. That's where the terminology comes from. Oh. You seen that? You fucking almost 40. You seen that in the history book? Yeah, no, I've never... I've never Hell no. Nah, because that shit... No one needs to know that we are some of the mothers of invention. That shit gets suppressed. But we know that Colonel fucking Sanders stole a recipe for chicken from some slaves and turned it into a billion dollar entity. We know that. Actually, you know what I'm more interested in is like actually that the history and lineage and, and culture of slavery. Like, um, I mean, seriously, from from the slaves perspective of like. Like why why did these children come into existence and like and how did that happen? Was it because someone was traded for somebody and then they had a wife that they had to leave behind, or, or they had a, like a, they had children that they had to leave behind, like or or I mean why all of that happened is really fascinating. I mean we to see me. parts of it in like you know your your famous movies like Roots and Color Purple and stuff yeah. like that. But only it covers it for like a generation. No, right? so there needs to be some deep anthropological dives into things that could happen but one of the parts that makes it hard is our history not just black people marginalized people in general even poor people back in the day you weren't allowed to write down all of this shit yeah. and through a lot of places only the rich people were allowed to write if you got caught reading and writing depending on your station you got fucked up yeah what's that uh, there's a book um, uh, a people's history of the United States um, uh, Howard Zinn Howard Zinn I think wrote that but that's like a pretty, um, that's a pretty interesting history of like the other side of America. Basically, the the Native Americans that had their land take do- taken over. What was their version of that history? Like that, um, a people's history. Yeah, that's yeah. it. How it's in the the famous Richard Pryor joke is <laughs> it's called history because it was his story. Yeah. It's basically whatever the white dude said, the dude that was in charge is his story. That's what they wrote down. A lot of other shit didn't go down. And you know, it's funny when we when I went to school in Japan, the American kids all made fun of the fact that the Japanese history books they cut out all the bad shit. Mm-hmm. And I looked at them like, mother, what? <laughs> we do the same shit. And they're like, no. I'm like, y'all are white. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Every 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 culture kind of like edits out like their own story. Right. Like the Japanese, they're they're Japanese that don't recognize like their their invasion of like of um, or, or their occupation of was it Shanghai and the Philippines and Korea. Like like that's kind of odd to me. I mean, yeah. as, as a Japanese American, but it's also kind of like it's kind of funny. Like, I mean, not. Not funny, funny. Not hilarious, funny, but, but peculiar, funny. No, but then we we see the same thing in the U.S. and like how we don't really like we don't really recognize the native people that live here. It's kind of like, well, what are you gonna do? We really need Starbucks. We really need it. <laughs> I mean, like, like do you guys do you do you guys want like to keep our culture alive or do you want Starbucks? Because you get one, you can't have both. You can't have both. <laughs> yeah, and people oh. choose Starbucks, and that's like really shitty. But people choose Starbucks like all the time. Well, all right. So here's the, here's the funny part. This, go, a, this goes to show you what happens when two friends get together. We've been doing this shit for two hours, bro. <laughs> I didn't realize that because I had it on simpty time. So. um this is going to take me forever to edit, <laughs> but it's okay. I'm sorry, man. No, it was worth it. I knew this was going to happen because we just haven't had a chance to catch up in a minute. Uh, I guess what we normally do is you you give me a pick, something that you think everyone should check out, 
and uh, you can be come to pseudo crew. You can say whatever you want. You give me a pick, and then I'll give a pick, and then we'll close this bitch out. Um, I'm going to pick jujitsu. Everyone should try jujitsu. I damn, I wish I could. My knees wouldn't support it. You, what do you, what you, you love? You what do you love the most? I thought you were a capoeira dude. Yeah, I did capoeira for a long time. I love capoeira. And now you're in the jujitsu? I've been really into jujitsu lately. BJJ? Yeah. Nice. What school? Um, Sapatero Jiu-Jitsu in oh, Kali. I, I made, uh, I made, um, Hydro Flies for them. Oh, yeah. My, my, my homie, Sean Chang, uh, he wanted to make it because I guess the main dudes came down last year, like October, November. Yeah. Like the originators. And we made, uh, the founders of it, whatever it is, we made them Hydro Flies with their logo. And that's cool. It has like a, a, a shoe, like a shoe logo is kind of a circle thing. Yeah, Novo Nyao. Yeah, yeah. So that's like a... Um, what I love about it is it's this, this like great mix of compassion and humility. So that like uh, I mean, most people just see it as a fighting art where people are trying to murder each other and strangle most each other. Most martial arts aren't really that though. Yeah. Yeah, most of them are disciplined. But this this one is really like like when you when you finally get someone into a submission, like you you do feel like a huge sense of compassion that like you don't want to hurt this person really. Mm. You you want them to submit. And on the on the flip side, when you are submitting to somebody, like that that's a huge sense of humility. Um, so I, f- I feel like that's such a, like I've learned so much about my own ego through this process. Uh, so I'd really recommend it for anyone. Man, that's cool. That, and that's good to hear. I mean, I think it's trippy, you know, the, the aging process and how the ego has changed. And like, I look at sometimes with the youngest and I just want to tell them, bro, I can save you a whole lot of headache. <laughs> but I realized People did tell me that shit, and I just looked at them like, "Motherfucker, you don't know me. I oh, got yeah. this, and I did it my way." I feel like you need that physical aspect of it of someone literally strangling you. Yeah, like, yeah. In order to, in order to sort of <laughs> to understand. get in, that, in touch with your own ego and be like, "Oh, this is how I project myself <laughs> out." Like, okay. Yeah, the projecting. There you go. Hey, man, I'm gonna have to have you back so we can talk more about uh, about ego and projecting and identities again, because I think you're a little bit more grounded than most of the people I roll with, and it's it's an important conversation to have at this point in time all right so here's my pick spinch if you what's haven't your, checked yeah, it out you got to check this out the defiant ones on hbo and if you don't have hbo this this is hood but i'm a hood kid so i'm gonna give you hood life sign up <laughs> sign up for the free trial because you only need four episodes all four episodes are out they're roughly about an hour and 10 hour and 20 minutes a piece uh watch them four episodes and then cancel the free trial or a sneak of some Game of Thrones while you're in there. <laughs> the Defiant Ones. The Defiant Ones. Right, it goes it into out. the history of uh, Dre from, you know, Street Days to Dre the Baller Billionaire. Oh, shit. And Jimmy Iovine. And there's just some deep, <laughs> deep, deep conversations in there. And a lot of it, I know you'll identify because I work with you and you're very much a cooler version of Jimmy. Huh. Like you have that, you have that level of work ethic in you. Just stroking my ego, just stroking it. I'm gonna oh, stroke you right you. in the damn face. Anyway, <laughs> folks, first of all, big big mahalo to my brother Spencer for coming to hang out with me today. Tell people how they can get in contact with you, or write you online and tell you that you're wrong. Um. Oh, jeez. <laughs> wow. Thanks. Thanks, Doc. Uh, Chris Ulta is my Twitter <laughs> handle. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. C H R I S Ota, O T A, just one word, Chris Ota. That's me on Twitter. Oh my God. Oh God. I'm just joking. That's, That's like a, a great, really long running joke. That is an extremely long running joke. Yeah. Um, Pseudo Crew is my company, I guess, uh, if anyone wants software. I it's thought not, Pseudo Crew meant like you had a fake crew. It's like Super <laughs> User Do Crew. It's a, oh. it's, a, it's a Linux thing. I know what Super User is, ding dong. Yeah. Pseudo Here, Crew. Try this. Uh, super User uh, Space Restart Space Server Enter. I'm just joking. <laughs> So, no. uh, RM <laughs> pseudo super try S U D O space RM uh, dot star. You've just slash like you've lost your entire audience. Negative like, R. They're, they're like, like this shit is too long. No, they really? lose all their data because I just erased your whole hard drive. <laughs> no one's uh, gonna open their command line <laughs> interface. Most people don't even know where the hell that shit is. Anyway, uh, thank you Spencer for hanging out. Uh, guess we can go get some food now. People, thank you guys for watching the Solid Podcast. I know this was a crazy long episode. I might have to divide it up into two pieces. 
because who the hell knew we were going to talk two hours and 10 minutes? Sorry, man. I, I talked too much. <laughs> no, it's all good. It was a great podcast. Uh, you can find us, of course, on solid, solid.fm is the website or The Solid Pod on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. And it's all going to be in the show notes. I'll put everything, the links and stuff we talked about, Spencer's books, his company, all of that. You can find it there. Please share with your friend. Don't forget to jump on iTunes and rate us. Give us a like. Uh, give us a five star rating and we'll see you again soon here on the solid podcast congratulations for making it all the way through aloha <laughs> they should get an incentive we're going to give them free power <laughs> the solid podcast has been brought to you by landsberg law offices if you ever need yourself a good lawyer give my homie marcus landsberg a call at 808-230-7419 that's 808-230-7419 also brought to you by Etched Aloha. If you ever need to get yourself something laser etched, laser engraved, or laser cut, or you're just looking for a custom gift, give us a call at 808-270-1926 or check us out online at etchedaloha.com. Thank you for listening to The Solid Podcast.